Virginia. We don't have so much time. Okay, so at this moment here, this is the second part of the video. We're going to go straight into deploying our package, uh, simple package. So to do so, we're going to launch um, Hello? Okay, yes, I'm see here. All right. So to, to do so, we're going to launch uh, Visual Studio as administrator. Always launch it as administrator, guys. So scroll down, look for Visual Studio, right click, and uh, run it as administrator. Yes. Okay, so once it opens, right, we have created a solution called Batch 10, right? So that's the Batch 10 solution that we created. So we're going to, you can create a new one or, or the most recent one that we created will show up here. So I'm just going to launch that. And you see that it launched, right? That is the solution that we are creating. Now, we're going to start by creating a project under that solution. So to do so, we have to go on the file and say new, let's create a new project now. What type of project do you want to create? There are so many different types of projects that you can create. Uh, this tool is very interesting. You can, you can use it to do so many things. So you can see here, it says, uh, I want to create a blank solution, or I can create a .NET framework solution. Uh, see, SQL Server database project. Let's say you just want to, a project for creating a SQL Server database. You guys know that, right? You can use this to create databases and it will deploy as many databases as you want with this, you can use that. Uh, unit test, share project, so many different types, you can play with it. But this is what we want. Uh, this one says integration service project Azure enable. This project may be used for building high performance data integration and workflow solution that can be run, uh, built in uh, platform as a service in Azure data factory. We're, we're not doing this for Azure. We're just, this is just what I want. Uh, this is a project for building high performance and workflow solution that runs, uh, can be run on SSRS catalog, including extraction, transformation, and loading. This is what I want. Okay. There's also this one here, a wizard that assists you in creating a new integration service project that is based on an existing one, import from a project deployment. So if you already have an existing one, you can use this and import it and import that. But we are creating a brand new one. We're selecting this and we're creating next. How are we going to call this project? We call it data load. We just call it data load. All right, data load project, for example. Now it shows you where it's going to be uh, located at. You can put this on, uh, add to a solution that already exists, right? If you say add to a solution, it put it to that blank solution, uh, solution that we created that first time. You can go ahead and create a brand new solution or you just add it to an existing one. So let's add it to that existing solution that we created earlier on, the batch 10. We all here together? Miss Pa, Sheryl? Yes, Sheryl. Yes, sir. We all here together? Yes. Oh, really? Doc, I just can Yes, sir. Okay. All right, then when we do that, just click create. Mm. So you successfully created your first SSIS project for data integration. Okay. So now the, the show begins, right? With SSIS package, I'm going to first take time and walk you guys through this, what this really means. Um, we have this one here we call the toolbox, right? 
this toolbox here gives you all the tools that you need to configure. For example, uh, data flow, if you just want something to execute a SQL task, right? Uh, if you want to do bulk instead of data, these are the most common ones that we use. Uh, uh, data profiling, execute a package, execute a process start, and so on. There's so many different things here, containers and so on, right? So these are the, the tools that you will use. Now, and this is what we call here a control flow. So you use this control flow to control how the data works into. Now we also have what is called a data flow. When you click on data flow, you see the tool changes, right? On the control flow, we have different types of flow. We have data flow, which says, where is the data moving from to where? Now, execute tasks will, I want to execute a task. For example, I want to create an exercise package that if it's every single time I run it, it runs this SQL command for me. You have analysis, or I want to create an uh, exercise package that will do data, bulk data inserts for me, and so on. Oh, but data flow, here on the control flow, when you can see on the control flow, we also have a data flow, which means that there's another tab here called data flow. When you click on data flow, you see that it changes here. It's not asking you, what is the destination? What is the source, right? For example, condition split, am I converting the data? Am I doing some merging? Am I joining data? Uh, my ODCP sources, am I moving from uh, SQL to Oracle, from Oracle back to SQL, from flat files and all those kinds of things? Am I doing any sorting? This is really on the most common one. But when you go on this data flow, it's classified under common, other transformation, other sources, other destination. For example, when you go on data flow and I want to go on the sources, this is where the data can, you can pick data from, right? Where is my data coming from? The data sources. It could be an, a .NET framework, uh, an Excel data file, a flat file, an OLDB data source, raw data, or XML source. That is on the sources. Now, where is it going to? I can get data from any of this source and I can load it to any of these destinations. My data could be going to a SQL Server, a SQL Server compact file destination, OLDB destination. It can also be going back to an Excel sheet, uh, data mining, modeling, data reader destination, and so on, right? Now, this is all about data flow. It's about where is it coming from? Am I transforming it? And where is it going to? That's as simple as that. Source, destination, transformation. Now, if I pick it from this source, let's say I pick an Excel sheet, I could go on transformation and transform before I load it to my destination, right? We are still talking about ETL, extraction, transformation, and loading the data back. So if I need to transform the data before I load it, there are so many different things I can do. I can do copy some columns. I can do a lookup. I can do a percentage sampling. I can do pivot on pivot, select statements, audit, and so on, right? So every single time that you do that. Okay, so once that is understood, now you can set parameters when you're pulling the data, I want to, set some parameters, event handler will tell you if there's an error message in that package, I want to see that on event part, and then Explorer just tells you everything that's here, right? So these are the very basic overflow of uh, SSIs, of control flow, data flow, parameter, and event handler. Okay, all right, now let's do it simple. Now, on the right side, of this, uh, you have here, uh, it's telling you getting started. Um, but now, if we want to build a package, right? Uh, let me see something with you. Solution Explorer. Okay. If it disappeared, if you want to bring it back, let me close this. My screen was like this, right? I needed to have my Solution Explorer so I can know my package is here. You can go here on view and say Solution Explorer and it will show you on this side. 
Are we all together? Are we all here? Can we all make sure that we have yes. our solution explorer showing up on the right? Yes, sir. Okay. So under your solution explorer, what are you seeing? I am building a solution under a solution that I created called uh, batch 10, right? And under this, we are creating a package called data load project. This package under a, pack, a project, you can have multiple packages. For example, an SSIS package. By default, when you just open a project and you want to build a package, they always name it as package.dtsx. If you change this extension, this package becomes unusable. So you can, you can rename it, but just make sure that you don't change the, the, the extension. So if I want to rename it, I can just click it, but make sure I keep my extension .dtxx. Yes, X. Okay. All right? Okay, so I can just call this package, rather than calling it package one, two to 10, I should give packages based on the content of that package. And this package that I want to build here, I just want to build a package that will run a simple select statement for me on the table, right? So I'll just call it data read. That's all. I want to create a package called data read. It just, the package will go to a SQL Server database, read data, does it for me. That's all about the package I want, right? So if I if you rename it, just click somewhere else and you see that it will ask you, are you sure you really want to rename it? Yes, I want to rename it. And you see now the package now has been renamed. If I want to create another package, remember this package is under a solution and this solution has a project, right? This is the hierarchy. Everything in SSRI starts from a solution, a solution has a package, oh, sorry, a project, and under a project, there are packages. So we can create another package. To create another package, you can just right click and say new SSIS package. You can import an SSIS package. For example, during class, when you guys were doing uh, SQL Server, in, uh, um, SQL Server import and export, you could load, create that package and save it as a package. And if you save it as a package, you can come here and just say uh, SSIS import. And it will take you to the import and you can import the package, right? But we don't want to do that. Okay, let's say I want to create another package. It's very simple, right? Click here and just say new SSIS package. You see, it automatically says package one. If I create another one, it just say package two. But it can't really funny if I if I have like ten packages here and then they're all named package one up to one package one thousand. What do what, what what's the content of it, right? We're going back to the real naming convention. Give names that reflect the content of what you're doing. So I can rename this one here. Let's call this one here. Rename this one. Always make sure you don't change the the extension. We'll call this package here. Uh, let's call this. Let's call this package um, run T SQL statement. I just want a package that will run a T SQL statement for me, for example. Click aside and accept it. This one here, I can rename this one to. Uh, import data from flat file. Can't give a space, guy. No space, please. All right, please go ahead, create three packages and rename them, please. All right, let's stop here. Now look at some of the faces. Um, I can tell that some people are not doing it. Uh, who was having issues? I have about two minutes for you. Share screen. Yeah. Fine. Then what was the last name? Uh, import flat file. Okay. If you're having issues, just share your screen right now. He said we should run, we should create uh, three packages. What should we just pick any random name for last uh, package? Uh, 
uh, those three, when you right click and say new package, it, it will automatically say package one. All right. I know we already have one and two. Should we do Should number three? He wants you to delete them. Yes, we have number three. You have number three and then rename them. Olivia, it's not me. Doug, can you see my screen? Yes, we solved this problem here. Chuck, I think you are not paying attention. You have no, to. No, it's not me. Close. Who's this? Is she not, not Chuck? That's no, me. me. I, I did That's why I said Chuck. Yes, you are not. Close. You have to close everything. Close SQL Server, SSMS, uh, the installer, and then rerun the file one more time. Leave this one here, just leave it. Close okay, SSMS. Okay. Let's start by closing this Visual yeah. Studio. Close it. Okay, close the Visual Studio also. All right. Uh, the installer, as you can see, a uh, SQL Server installer, see running in the background. Close that also. Just right click and close that. Okay. Open that uh, one again one more time. Close. Click OK and then install. Click OK and install. Install. Click OK. Chokes, click OK, please. Install. Um, OK, install. Uh, process before. Close. Pros following process. There's a path. What is that path thing running? Close the following process before running. Can you close this? Close it. Click OK. Close this completely. Go back to that download. Go back to the download. All right, run it again. Chokes, I have to move on that. I don't have time, I'm running out of time. You have to close all that and then install it. It will work, okay? Okay, Doc. That path, path what it means there's an app still open, you need to close it. Yes. If you if 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 it still shows that error message, uh open your task manager and look for that app called path something, right? Click uh -huh. close it. Okay. And then run it again. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay, guys. So we are all here. We've created three packages. We don't really need all of them. Let's first start with the first one, right? On this package called data read, we need to find data. All I want to do in this package is I want to read data from a SQL server, extract that data, and load it to another SQL server. That's all I want to do, right? I'm reading data from a SQL server, extracting it, and I'm loading it to another SQL server, right? And we're going to create it as a package. So in order to do that, let's understand all the other things here. We have on this something called connection manager. This connection manager tells me where am I pulling my data from and where is the data going to? So you can create connections, right? So I can create connections here where the data is coming from and also create connection where the data is going to. Is it coming from an Excel sheet? Is it coming from a SQL server? Is it coming from an OLDB on a flat file? Where is this coming from? And then where is it going to? All that goes under what is called connections, right? I will see the under connection manager. Right now, you can look at connection manager up here or down here, right? So first of all, let's start by creating the connection where our, our data coming from. So if we click on connection, uh, we can right click on connection and say new connection manager. You can do it up there or you can come down here and also right click and say, uh, when you right click down here, it's automatically going to ask you what type of connection do you want to create. 
new OLDB, like SQL Server is an OLDB source. Flash file is like an Excel sheet. OL, uh, uh, .NET connection is from uh, internet analysis. So, so you can go here, either just select what connection, if you already know it, or you can just say new connection. If I say new connection, it's going to ask me what type of connection you try to create, right? Look at all these different data sources, right? We have all these data sources that we need to create, we can create a connection for. And SQL Server is an OLDB, this one. It's an OLDB connection. So if you select this OLDB and click Add, it's going to lead you to SQL Server. But on this window, we need to create that connection. So I'm just going to click the new, and I'm going What's to- OLDB. Sorry? What's OLDB? Online analysis, online, and uh, LLD stands for online analysis, uh, online, um, online analysis. Please look it up. It's online yeah. something. Monday yeah. right now. All right, thanks. Sorry? OLTT, online transactional and then online analytical. Just OLAP. Just OLAP and OLCP. Oh, okay. So L, o -L, please look for OL. O -L OLTP is transactional right. transaction process. So, oh. Please do that, that's your homework. Let's not do, let's, let's move on. So, once you are here, let me cancel one more time. We, we I right click here and say new connection, all right? And then we have to select the, the connection that matches SQL Server, which is this one, and click add. Here you need to define what type of connection you want to. A new connection. And server name, what server name you're trying to connect to. Since I already know my server name, and the server name has to be the name of the server. Here we take backslash the instant name is plot. Right? If you don't know it, you can go back and check. But it's your last name and the, the name instant that you, you configure. So once I do that, what type of connect am I doing Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication? Let's do SQL Server authentication. The moment you do that, it's going to go in there and select any database you have on there. You see, right now on that instant, I don't have any database. Uh, I think I should have a database. But even I just select master database, I can click test connection. It says connection is succeeded. At least it means that this Visual Studio is making a successful connection back to SQL Server where we install the SSRS. Right, so it working. So if I just click OK like this, now it creates a connection to the master database. But I really don't want to connect to a master database. I want to connect to a real server database on that. So I'm going to quickly do something here, guys. SSMS. So I can go there and quickly create a database. And while I'm doing this, I'm going, I'm going to quickly download. Uh, I'm going to quickly download. Adventures work, adventures work. Adventure work, sample database. Adventures work, sample database. I'd like to have uh, 2019 Adventures work. This is the OLTP that I was confused. This one stands for Online Transactional Processing Database. The, uh, this one is OLAP for Data Warehouses, for, right? Online Analysis uh, Databases. So, but the OLEP is what you should find out. Okay, so, so I've had Object that link in an embedding database. Say it again. Object linking and embedding database. Okay, because IT has so many terminologies that you never know all everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to download Avengers work. Why is it so big? So I've downloaded the lightweight one. 
Anyway, it's almost done. Okay, so back here, I'm going to connect to one of the instance, the prod. So this is the same connection that you need. If you do not know how to get it, you can still go back to SSMS, get this and use it as your connection manager, right? Okay, so I'll, if I connect here, All right, so is my ventures not done downloading now? Yes, it's done downloading. So I'll just quickly restore that ventures work on this instance, uh, restore database. Uh, I'm going to put, cut, cut, cut this and put it somewhere that I can easily pick up. So I just put it here inside this ace and I put it here on my backup. Bump it here. Okay, so I can go back here and uh, pick that file. Uh, back up here. Okay, so restore. Okay, now I have a database. So on this database, does not have an owner, so I need to make sure I give it an owner. I give it S8, right? Now I have a database. Okay, let's go back to our Visual Studio. This, I'm just going to delete this because I needed a, a connection to a real database. So let's do it again, new connection. And I'm putting my date, my instant name here, which is here with tech backslash prod, right? How do I get this? It's from here. If I don't know it, I go here and I copy it copy this connection here and I put it in there. All right, so I'm using SQL Server Authentication. Now, if I go on drop down menu, I will automatically see my database now. So I want to create a connection to this database, All right? Okay, so you can attach the database file. I don't want to attach the database file, so just, I can test the connection there, it succeed. You can also do this. Let's say you say SQL Server Authentication and I put here SA, I put the, uh, let me just put a wrong password here. I say test connection. The connection failed because of error in the initialization provider. Login failed for user S8, right? So it's really checking to make sure that SQL Server is making a true connection from Visual Studio back to SQL Server. That's why we started doing this by installing SSIS on that instance, right? Okay, so I'm using Windows authentication and I'm going to create this connection. So now we have this connection. You can create as many connections as you want. Let's say I have another database, I want to create another connection, I can keep doing that, right? For instance, if I go to, to this server here and I just create a database, for example, I create one called badge 10. I can create this database on this and I can go back here and create a new connection to that database. So, here we take backslash fraud. And I want a database called batch 10, see? Now I have two connections here now. So every connection is per database, right? So we want the connection here, so let's click okay. So now, once you click okay, now you see that on the, on the connection manager, there is a connection to that <laughs> database. Now, let's create another connection. Now I have two instances here, fraud and uh, pages, All right? So I have these two instances. So I'm going to create another connection because what I want to do is I want to do a select statement on this server here. And I want to load the data into this server here. Just extract here and load it here. Very simple package. Extract data from fraud and send it to uh, staging. So in order for you to do that, you need to have also a connection back to staging, right? So let's go back here on Connection Manager and create another connection. So a new connection. And it's also still going to be OLTD connection. New connection. This time around, I'm going to here with tag backslash STG, right? And on that, I'm going to also create a database here called batch 10, batch 10. 
So I'll just extract data from this adventures work on floor, and I'm going to load it down to this SDG on Bash 10 database. Okay, so I have that. So let's go back here. So this connection is going to Bash 10. Click OK, right? And click OK. You see, the more connection you create, they all line up down here. Any questions so far as far as creating connection managers are concerned? Doc, I notice if I'm creating mine, I'm not, I don't see the options to choose that OLTP. So that OLE. No. -L you should be able to see it. Let Guys, see. because this is just this is an intensive class. I would need I would need I would want to create your indulgence to extend this class a little bit for 30 more minutes so at least we can deploy a package. Are we okay with that? Yeah. I know some of you have yes, to go sir. to work. If you have to leave, please, or you watch the remaining part of the video when you come back. Okay. All right. Uh uh Felix. Okay. So that's the that's the you see all the list. You you normally have a list here. No, I don't no, know because you are doing it wrong. Go, cancel that. Okay. Go down there on the on the connection manager. Okay. Right click. And select new connection. Oh. You are already going straight to OLE OLE DB. If you already know that the con the connection you are trying to create, there's no reason going through this long route. Okay. Make sure you select the right connection. Okay. So what do I take here? So let look for OLEDB. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry. That's Where why I say there? this is the longer route because okay. you need to look for it. Meanwhile, the other one you just see immediately. Uh, the, the other one went, came straight here. Okay, you create a new connection. Create another instant, please. Okay. Instant. You will not see anything on the drop down, so you have to type the instant name directly. Okay, you have a database on that dev that you want to move data to. Sure about the spelling, everything's right? Yes. Let me try one. No, you cannot be, okay, you have brought one, okay. Yeah, yes. Let me use master. No, you are, how can you move data to master? Get the real user database. Okay, let me check. If you don't have one, you can go back and create one and move it to. All right, stop sharing. Okay. We good? Connection managers created. All right, let's proceed. All right, so the next thing that we need to do right now is we just need to go to our data flow. All right, so first, before you do so, you need to tell SQL Server on the data flow task what type of data flow you try to do, right? The first thing that I need to do is I need to, you can just do on, uh, so this is going to be under the other project, which is uh, runs an experiment. Here, we need to do this data flow task. So to do that, you can just double click. When you double click, it will show up on this window here. This is where I, I was talking about those precedents here. They show up here. You can do so, or you can click and then, sorry, you can just drag and drop, right? So you can just double click, or you can drag and drop, which means I can create as many precedents as I want, however I want my data to go to. For example, I could say here, uh, I want to, first data flow, second, I need to execute a statement, meaning I need to bring some data in here, once the data is in there, I need to execute a SQL statement. And then you have to drag this, this is called precedent. This will just show SQL Server, so this is how the data will flow from when the data flow in and when what happens after that. So we're starting with data flow. So whenever you, you put a data flow, you need to tell SQL what is going to be my data sources, right? So first I need to get a data source. So where am I getting data from, right? And when you click on that data uh, source assistant, uh, why is it asking for, look out for this one. Come on, I need to get uh, uh, 
on OLDB source. So we'll go to here. Not on that list. Oh, sources, sorry. Okay. So I need to get this is what I'm looking for. Right? So when you put it here, you see the X sign here, it means that it's not being configured. Where is it going to? It's also going to go to a destination. So I need to look for a destination. Remember what I said on data flow. On data flow, you are defining a source and a destination. So when you put, let me first take this one out so it doesn't confuse you guys. We're still on data flow. So you take a data flow, it's not yet configured because you need to provide what? A source and destination. Where's data coming from and where is it going to? So when you double click on it, it will take you to data flow. You have to specify what type of source. It's, an, it's this type of source. Then where is it going to? What type of destination? I'm also taking it to a SQL server. So I'm also dragging this here, right? So you see, it's coming in here and it's going to this. So you need to now drag and drop. Okay, so let's configure the source. See, let me first remove this, take a slow. We are still on the source. So the moment you double click, it needs to tell what is the data source. This is my data source. I've already configured the data source. But you, and it says here, common uh, OLGB managers. These are the ones that you've already configured. So you can select any of them. I'm taking it from Adventures Work. And what table do I want to? You can access more. I can say exactly what table I want to pull from the Adventures Work. I just want to run a select statement on the person the person table on the Adventures Work. Right? And you can even preview it. It will show you already the preview of that table, how it looks like. Right? If you need to do some transformation, you can do it. Let's do it. Let's take it step by step for now. I just want to pull data from this adventure work on this particular table. Click OK. You see, now the X sign is gone. But if you go back here, you see that it's now gone. But it's just data loaded, which means that I can run this package. But this package is just load data into the SQL Server, nothing else. I can click here to, to run the package. You have this option here that says start the package. If I run it, it starts it start building the package. And you can see here, there is no error message. See, it's building the package. So it's going to that eventually what that bit and pulling every record, right? It pulls every record from that table. Now the record is loaded. But what are you doing with it? Are you just going to load it and leave it there? No, I want to load it to somewhere else. Now, so what, what have we done now? We've just extracted data from a SQL Server. It's now sitting in here. And we need to do something. It. We can transform it, which is the T part. And then we can load it somewhere for the load for the L. Right? OK. So this package here, you see that it's in the execution mode. When you click execution, if it fails, it will show you here. Right now, it does not. And uh, it's, it's, this is, we call this debugging mode. If there's any problem here on the event handler, you're going to see it, see it here. But right now, this is on the progress. You look through it and you see that it took about, uh, it started at 11.07.03, and then it completed 100%, and it finished at the same time. So it took less than three seconds to load the data. So this is how you debug when you're having SSRS and you're having issues, you're trying to troubleshoot, understand why is it failing. This is how you look at it on this mode. So if there's no problem on this package, you can just stop it. And then go back to your control flow. All right, okay. Let me stop here and make sure I have everybody on track. So what, what, what have we done? We have, on the control flow, we took the data flow task. On the data flow task, we double click on it, and it takes us to the data, to data. so on the control flow, we double click on it, it takes us to the data flow task. And 
we have to tell what are we doing? We are bringing data from an OL EDB source. That's what we've just done. I will double click on it and we'll just configure the source. Where are we getting data from? It's from this table. We'll click OK. And then you can run the package. Make sure that there's no error. I want everybody to do that. If there's any error, we'll troubleshoot before we move on. So what, what about the destination? We are, we are taking step by step. We're still on the source. OK, OK. Can I get a confirmation that there's nobody having an error message or having issues here? No, guys. I have a class like this. If you are I having have problems, you don't talk, you don't explain. I'm assuming that everybody is on track and I'm moving forward. No, All right, Esther, track. share your screen. I have an error message. Yes, that's what we need to troubleshoot. If the error message, we troubleshoot it together. All right. So you are on the data flow task. So double click on it. All right. You are getting it on the that uh, uh, database, is it, and that, that's a table called CD, right? On mutual cell. Yes. Okay. It's going to CD. Okay. okay. Then click OK. You can pre let's preview it and see if there's any data in there. Yeah, I have some data. Okay. Close it. Click OK. All right. So now you. You can test to see whether the data is, is actually coming in if you use that as a source. The reason why you have to do step by step is to make sure that if there's a problem like now you have a problem, we know where to troubleshoot the problem. Okay, execute. There is an error during the task execution. All right, now click OK. Go on Package Explorer. We'll tell you where the problem is coming from. Package Explorer. Package Explorer on the little one, there, that one. Uh, okay, it didn't actually run. Go back to uh, uh, control flow. No, you see, you went too far. You're already telling SQL, I want to load data and I execute a SQL statement to it. We are not okay. yet there. Okay. You're only loading data. That's all. All right, I got it. Run the task again. Run it again more time. All right. And see, it runs successfully with no problem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is how you troubleshoot, right? Now, if you click on uh, uh, progress, you can see where the problem is. Lucia, you have a problem. Share your screen. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. So you are, what is your, let's start, let's go back, control flow. Let's go to control flow first. All right, so on the control flow, double click on the control flow. So just double click on top, no, double click on the control flow. This one? Yes. Okay, it takes you to, to this one. Now, you, what are you doing? You are, you are saying an OLDB command. That's not what we want to do. We say it, we want to pull data, not run a command. So close that. You need that. We're adding, but an OLEDB source. We're pulling data okay. from a SQL server. So look for sources, go to sources. Scroll down and look for sources. No, no source assistant. Sources, other sources. Look for that. Scroll down, you are not on other sources. There you go. Then pull it from an OLDB source. Okay, now configure that. Double click on it and then configure what, where are you pulling data from? Okay, from that instance or which, or which, ta or which table? Okay. You just realize that what you're trying to do will not work right if you're moving from 2019 to 2016, it's not going to work. Okay. Okay, which table? Let me say person by person. Person by person. All right, preview it. Make sure the data is really there. All right, it's pulling the data. Click OK. OK, 
run that command, that, 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 that package line, run the package on the start or above that, start. Yeah. Start. start. If just slightly above that, there's a start button. Yeah, I cannot see it. Keep going up. Do you have one script? Start button is right on, on straight on that line, the same line where you are. Under analyze and tools. Maybe this, this uh, sharing is blocking it. So we can see it. But we give, give you, uh, you guys fine. You'll make a view fine on this one. You see how one zoom and the zoom is blocking it. There's a start button right there in front of you. All right, stop sharing and run the packet. You should be fine. Um, I'm, I can see you now. Of course, I know that you were there. <laughs> no, the, the you have to always screen, take zoom and put it on the screen. Blocking it. No, but I always have to make sure the screen that you're using that there's nothing in there. I okay. move zoom yes, to the yes. other screen. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I see the class the, the class size keep dropping. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see the last one starting on this. <laughs> I'm struggling to from 17 now we're 50 of us in this class. <laughs> <laughs> Am I too fast? You guys think I'm too fast? Yes, doctor. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah, yes, yes. I'm fast, huh? Yeah. 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 Highly on the fast lane. Anyway, we don't have this thing. If I have to do slow, then you need you guys need another one more week to do this little, little thing. I just want you guys to at least have a feeling you can. Spend time after that, get the video or watch it, practice over and over, and then have talking points. You know, <clears throat> we only have two days, today and tomorrow. Okay, so so we have just done this. So when you click to run the package, it will take you on the debugging mode. Right, right now it's debugging. If there's any problem, you can see it. So down here it says package execution completed with success. Click here to switch to design mode. So if you don't want to be on debugging mode, you click here, it takes you back to, to designing mode. Here, it will, it, this is what it shows you, right? Okay, so let's go back to our designing mode. So we are here, right? Now, we are not only going to extract this data. I want to extract this data and load it somewhere else. So let me get my destination. Destination, OLDB destination. We'll hold it here, drag it, and drop it. All right, so. Now I'm going to drag it and drop my precedent and put it here so that it shows it. You guys should remember where you did this in class, dragging things and dropping? Yeah, yeah. What? Database, database diagram. No. Mm -hmm. Job scheduling. Maintenance plan. Maintenance plan, thank mm -hmm. you, Alex. Maintenance plan. Do you guys know that maintenance plan was an exercise package you were building? You didn't know that's that. What is that, that that's an exercise package, yeah. right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and double click this and tell SQL Server where do we want our data to go to? I want this data to go to this other one. So I want it to go here. And what I want here is, I want it to go to, there is no table, right? I can tell SQL Server, when you go to that table, create a similar table, the same record for me. How can I tell SQL to do that? By doing click here on new, it will go here and you see this? This is a simple statement. Create table. I cannot give my table name. I can call this one here. Person. What would it mean again? Uh, or, uh, I call it person table. Right? So create a table for person. And that table is going to have this. This record here are the same record you had on the previous table. So if you do that, it will create that. And you can even keep identity. You can say keep no values, lock table, do whatever, maximum insert, and uh, view existing. If the table was there, you see when it goes there, you see the way it's going to create it. It looks like that. OK. So what have I done? I just selected where my data is going to. And I decided to create a new table because there's no table in that, in that database. And I can do this if I want, but I must not, so I will uncheck it. So on the left side here, you can map 
this is where transformation is taking place. The E, the T part of the, the transformation. I'm saying from my left there for my source, my identity column should go to identity column. This one should go here. If you don't want it to go there, you can change it. Huh? You can change here. If I double click here, um, how do I change it again? Okay, I can say here on my input, uh, I don't want to get anything, which means that I don't want to pull identity column from my input column. You, it will ignore it, but I want it. But if I, if I want it, I can also say, I can click here and delete this. You see, it ignore, but I cannot say from here, I want to pull this one down here. Uh, so let me do that. See, I can decide that when I insert in the data, the identity column should go, but on my first name on the, on the source. So I can transform it the way I want it. However, to do that, you just hold the arrow here, press on this key, drag it to any, if you drag it to any column, it takes it there. So press hold it. If I drag it to this one, it takes it there. You see, as it's taking it there, it's deleting the other one. So let me cancel this so that I don't mess, mess up top. Let me do it one more time. Double click. And then uh, on the source, you see, um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm not putting on any table. So I'm going to say new. So it's going to create a table for me on that, that database. And I'll just call it here a first week table. And I click OK on the mapping. Mapping tells you how you want to map the data. Add put here, you want, there's nothing here. So after that, just click OK. So right now, I have successfully mapped data. I'm creating a data flow. Now moving data from source to destination. If I run my package, you see, this is the same thing that you guys did in class. It just tells me I have extracted, you see, you see 17,000 records from that table and I've inserted them here. And you can test, you can go back from SQL Server and check this table and you're going to see there's a table there. See, table of the credit. As simple as that. So when you say copy data across in our work, the faster thing to do is what? Just create a simple exercise package, run it, and it will do that for you, right? All right, can we do that please? Can we do that and verify that it has really worked? And the package here is really working. I'll stop sharing. If anybody's having a problem, share your screen. Let's make sure that everybody at least builds the package. Oh, can I share my screen? I'm still behind. Yes, go ahead and share your screen. That's what I'm leaving you guys to share your screen. All right, you're really behind. All right, let's start with data flow. Double click. Let's drag the data flow task and drop it in the middle in there. On your left, you have the data flow task. Press hold it and drag it to your right. Yes, hold it there, drop it in the middle. Okay, all right, we'll start the data flow task. Now, let's, no, 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 no. I, did, I didn't say do twice. Double click on the data flow task. And let's configure it, all right. So data flow task will require what? Source and destination. So let's get a source. Go on other sources. Other sources on the left. Go down to other sources. All right, let's get data from an OLDB source. Hold it, drag it, and drop it in there. Okay. Configure that, let's double click and let's configure that source. Where are we getting data from? We have created a connection manager, okay? Which table are we, are we going to get the data from? Oh, so Drop that menu on that table. No, 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 that's database. That's, no, we're taking tables. Next one. Let's look, let's take it from our 
the person doctor. Are you taking it from a veggies work database? Yeah. Okay. Let's scroll down, look for person or person table. Are you sure this is a venture work database? That's not a venture work. No. All right. Take the person table. Anyone? That's fine. I don't care. Just take any table. Okay. Preview it. Let me make sure that that's really data. Preview. Preview. That thing just has one date. There's not one record, man. Can you crack? You, you, you don't have a venture work that, on that instance? Okay, take the other table, orders. The orders, orders. Review? Review. No record. Uh, all right, I don't have time right now. Just take the, the anyone that has some, even one record. All right, okay, we okay? All right, so your yeah, source has been configured. Let's run the packet, make sure it's run well. Go up, up, up to your toolbar, look for start, run the start. If after this class, you go back, close the laptop, come back next day, of course, you just became a robot in this class, right? You can say click here, click here, click here. You just clicked it. So you just go back here and try other things. Watch YouTube videos, build other simple packages. I'm already introducing you guys how this thing works. Don't expect that we're going to teach you everything. Go there, explore, try it on your own, and let's you see how it works out for yourself. All right, so it's working well. Stop the, deb the debugging mode. Go up there, you have the red square, stop it. All right. So that's how you build a package in exercise. Now let's go ahead now and, and create the destination. Where is it going to? So look for other destination. And uh, it's also, we're also taking it from SQL and loading it back in SQL. Test it out guys. Find exercise where I can bring data from Excel into SQL, from SQL back to Excel, from flat file to SQL. Test as many examples as you want. Drag it and drop it under that and make the connection. No. Precedence must be followed. You cannot leave from destination to source. You have to leave from source to destination. So pull, pull that source, put it somewhere in the middle so you can have space at the bottom. No, don't expand. Click, hold it, and drag it up. Just click once in there. Hold it, drag it, and put it in the middle. Can you click somewhere outside to do it one more time? Click once. Hold it, drag it. You know what? Just put the destination somewhere under that thing. Now connect the source to the destination. No. You have not connected the source to the destination. Click on the source and connect it to the destination. Were you following me when I was doing it? Click on the source, hold the arrow, drag it and drop it on the destination. Click on the no. source on the top. Philip, the source DB is right there in front of you. Click on it. Click once, exactly. Hold the, the blue arrow, drag it, and drop it in there. Not the entire thing, the arrow itself. Bring it back. Let me do it for you. All right. Now hold that arrow alone, just the arrow. Drop it on the destination. Okay, now configure the destination. Double click and configure it. All right. You to create a connection to this two connections. Yes, I did. All right. No, you did not. I have only one connection. You have only one connection. Can you go back? 
to uh, hold on here. Go back to connection manager on the top right, top right corner. Top, no, on this, yeah, the, somewhere in there. Right click, let's create a new connection. Okay, this one has to close us. Let's create a new connection. It's an OLAVDB connection also. Add. Okay. So why is it that it, I'm, I wasn't seeing it? Okay, now let's click on that destination one more time. Okay, the connection. All right, there you go. You can see. It. No, that's where that, that's where the, that was the song, right? That's the destination. All right. Now you are you are bringing it to a new database. So just create a table on the new. It will create a similar table from what you pick data from. If you click new, can you click on new, please? I did. It's still reading. Okay. Lesson submission information to map in exercise. Please, you have to repeat this process, process affiliate, get real eventual work that has more data in it, and then do like that. Okay. So what you need to do here is just okay, okay. It, it created the small database. Click okay. Fail to connect to solve because the connection manager can will take the da, 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 da. Yeah, you have to figure out that why your connection is not working, but, but that's how you do it. You need, to, you need to create the connection to that and then you can run that. All right, guys, I wanted to really deploy this uh, database. Um, all right, just before we leave, let me just do the deployment so you guys can really see how the deployment works before we leave today. All right, so we've created a simple package. That package move data from this source, take it to destination folder, destination database, and we have, we've tested, we've seen that the, the table indeed was created on the destination. Now, if you want to deploy this as a package, how do you do that, right? So what you need to do is you come back here on, the, on top of the package, data read package, right click on it and say deploy package. You can click on it and say execute package, it will run the package for you. So either you right click execute or you come up here and click start. It will do the same thing. All right? Okay. So it finished. So let me stop this. Let me show you one more time. So we are here. Um, this, this is the package that we are on. What happened to my package? Hmm? What just happened to my package? Did I just mess up? All right, we'll start. Okay. So stop. Data flow task. I just lost uh, the connection that I was creating here. Anyway, so at this point to deploy, it's very simple. You right click on it on the package you've been creating and say deploy package. Now it opens a wizard, deployment, deploy package wizard. You click on next. Now we're deploying this package to what? To SSIS and SQL Server, where you can deploy it to Azure. All right, you see that everything that we're doing here, Azure keeps popping up. Microsoft is telling you it's time. Keep thinking about it. No matter what you're doing, know that you have to move. All right, we, let's deploy it to SQL Server alone. Next. Now you need to tell SQL Server, which server do I want to deploy this on? I need to deploy it on. Here we take backslash. 
This is where I want to deploy this on. And I can click connect. You see? Um, now the path, when you're deploying, you need to create a path. You can create a path by, you, you browse to create a path. So down here, an integration service packet was not found on this server. To deploy a package on this server, you must create an SSIS DB catalog. Open the create catalog box from the integration service catalog. So right now, we cannot deploy it because we don't have a catalog created. So to do that, and this is actually something that in my last job, I had a problem about this. The SSIS guy had an issue that when you're, when you're creating a catalog, you need to provide an encryption password. He forgot the password and kept disturbing me, telling me that I, I encrypt the database. I, when, we, when I troubleshooted and realized that it's because the catalog that he created, he had forgotten the password. He didn't say a word. He didn't even come out to say thank you. All right, anyway, so we are here. So I want to deploy this package on this instance. We have what is called here integration services catalog. That's the catalog we're talking about. So if you expand this catalog, you see that there's nothing here created. First, you have to create a catalog in order to deploy SSIs on your instance. When you create, it automatically creates a database. You cannot change the name called SSISDB. I will need you to, I need, I will need you guys to really watch this video and write down as much as you can write for your talking point and interview. I should not ask you guys any question and you guys will tell me I have no idea about exercise. If we will ask you questions, you need to develop talking points on exercise. Everything we're doing here is a whole project on its own, right? Okay, so now when you create this, when you click to create this package, it will require you to provide a password and, and confirm the password. And this is the key that a guy forgot. It's a key needed for this encryption. So if I click, uh, okay. Oh, uh, sorry. I have to enable this and provide a password. So we'll call it password one. Password one, right? Enable this server as SSI scale out master. We're not going to do all that. So click OK. And your SSIS DB has been created. Right? Question on this? Question? Issues? No. OK. If you come back here now and browse, automatically SQL finds the path that, that, that for you. So I can create new folders now because it's just a package. This folder, I'm, I'm calling it here batch 10. This is where I want to be. Every batch 10 package that I'm deploying, I'll be putting it under that folder. Right? You can create more projects. Uh, this project was called what? Data load, right? That was data load project. Okay. And then you click OK. Now the package will be deployed on that project. Next, deploy. Successful. So talking about this an interview, my job as a DBE, so far, what, what do you know about exercise? You explain what exercise is all about. You can talk about the fact that I, I deploy, I create simple packages and deploy them. Sometimes I get a, 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 a task to just move data from one server to another. It may depend on what data source I'm doing it. I create a simple package. I deploy the simple package and I can use this package to create as a job, right? Now close, you see now, if you go back to the server and refresh this, you see batch 10 was there. A project, other project, I can project called project uh, data load. And I can run here, I can execute this project here uh, directly. Uh, it's not me. Okay, I have to expand it. Expand the package. That's the package. You can write here and execute the package directly here. If I execute this, what is happening is that it's actually going to move the data from this all the way down there. Right? You want to report that? Yes. That's exactly what this is doing. It's doing exactly what the, what we did by pulling data from there, loading it, and it gives you a report here if, if it's failed or not.
And the last thing I want to do, no, let me do this tomorrow. I see you guys are already tired. I can keep teaching because I'm very inspired about this. All right, guys. I know it was a little 